Hey everyone, my name is Joel Smith. Uh, I reviewed To the Golden Shore, The Life of Adam Judson, written by Courtney Anderson, an incredible book. Uh, that gives just a vivid portrait of who Adam Judson was, uh, how his life uh, has impacted the, the nation of Burma, and, and really has impacted tons of people uh, since, his, since his death. And like I've said, there's very few people who have made such a significant impact in world missions as Adoniram Judson. His life as a Baptist missionary to Burma has influenced the eternal destinies of, of thousands of people and has also encouraged many more to devote, them li devote their lives to seeing the unreached reach with the gospel. And so drawing upon uh, remaining letters of Adoniram Judson and also a, a conglomeration of different uh, historical church records, Courtney Anderson does a great job of capturing his life and his ministry into the Golden Shore. So Adoniram Judson, he was born in Massachusetts on August 9th, 1788. He was the son of a minister and he grew up learning the scriptures. And at a young age, Adoniram showed a great aptitude for learning and just excelling in life. He was described as being unusually high-spirited, enthusiastic, uh, energetic, and very active. And uh, so Adoniram entered college, Providence College, which would subsequently become Brown University. He entered that shortly after his 16th birthday, which is, which is amazing, and would quickly advance to the top of his class. He graduated from Brown within three years as the valedictorian, and as he graduated, he actually wrote two textbooks. So the guy was extremely smart, very uh, inclined to learn, and excelled at, at an extremely rapid pace. So while studying at university, Adoniram Judson met a guy named Jacob Eames, and he was extremely influenced by Eames' uh, deistic views and understandings of who God is or isn't, perhaps. And so Adoniram actually rejected the God of his father, and in light of that, chose to pursue a career path in the arts, which is kind of strange with his ability to learn and excel, but he chose the arts. And uh, so anyway, it took Adoniram to New York. And uh, one day he was coming back from New York. Uh, some things had fallen through in his career path, pursuing the arts. And he was forced to stop because of inclement weather at a small inn. The small inn had one room that was available for stay. And so Adoniram took it. And the thing that was unique about this is that the room was located beside, of course it was located beside another room, but the occupant, the tenant of the room that was beside Adoniram, the guy was actually extremely sick and uh, was actually dying. He was on his deathbed. And so Adoniram, through the walls, could hear the moans and the groans of this tenant beside him. And throughout the night, uh, it drove and guided Adoniram to contemplate his own death um, and his own eternal destination. So anyway, Adoniram fell asleep the next morning, woke up, went to the landlord of the inn and, and just asked about the guy who was staying beside him. And uh, the landlord told him that the tenant beside him, the guy had actually died. And Adoniram asked who he was, if he knew his name. And... Uh, the landlord said that his name was Jacob Eames. And so anyway, uh, this sent Adoniram into a, a frenzy, really, just worried, man. The guy who had influenced him to accept a deistic worldview had just died and is most likely plunging into an eternal torment. And so that led Adoniram to, and to just be obsessed with finding out who this guy, who this God was. So within three months, he enrolled in a seminary, Andover Seminary. He enrolled as a deist, uh, but... Within a couple months of being there, the Lord uh, revealed himself to Adoniram and actually uh, saved his soul. Soon after coming to Christ, Adoniram decided to, to devote his life to foreign missions. And uh, as you guys probably know and are familiar with the Haystack prayer meeting, uh, Adoniram became a, a, a very intricate part of that meeting. And the, these, this, these comrades, really as they were gathering together, their prayers sparked a movement towards international missions. Um, so anyway, along with some of his comrades, uh, Adoniram was commissioned as one of the first American missionaries to the East. So eight, in 1812, Adoniram and his newly, uh, newly married wife, Anne, or Nancy Judson, as he called her, embarked on a ship in Salem, Massachusetts, and within months would arrive in Calcutta, India. Soon after that, they established a mission, a mission uh, let's call it a house, a mission station in Rangoon, and this would be really their central their central place of ministry in Burma for, for years to come. They endured six years of harsh ministry. It was a very uh, very harsh ground, and so they spent much of their time removing stones and preparing the soil for the, soil for the gospel. But within six years, Adoniram and Nancy saw their first convert, whose name was Mao Nao in 1819. 
So within the next couple of years, the Judsons would see uh, more converts come to Christ, and they would even be allowed to appeal to the government, the, not the government, the emperor of Burma, who they called Golden Feet, to to uh, to seal religious freedom for Christianity. But they were denied, um, and sadly, uh, in 1824, Adoniram and uh, some of the other missionaries that were there would be imprisoned, um, and it was because it was uh, they were on the brink of war. And so the Burmese government thought that Adoniram might be a spy, and so they imprisoned him. And so Adoniram would spend the next 18 months in a Burman death camp. And these camps were harsh conditions. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but extremely harsh conditions. And within a few years of his release, Adoniram would lose his wife, uh, Nancy Judson, and also his first uh, daughter, Maria. Uh, they would both die of health complications. Um, and really over these next two years, after 1824, Adoniram was sent really into the darkest times of his life. He uh, was, there was much suffering, much turmoil in his life, like I said, and, and so he slowly moved away from his mission uh, in Malmin, Burma, and eventually he established a hermitage in the tiger-infested jungle in Burma. Um, it was here that, man, he would really just really contemplate just the darkness of his own soul, and uh, he actually would even dig his own grave and, and stand and look, peer into it, contemplating death very seriously. But God did not leave him there. God came and uh, brought the news that his brother, who was uh, an atheist before Adoniram left for Burma, that his brother actually had passed away. But like weeks before dying, he would accept Christ as Lord. And this proved to be a turning point in Adoniram's life and, and spiritual health. So Adoniram slowly came out of his hermitage, and he came to realize that the Spirit of God was moving powerfully throughout Burma, uh, drawing many people to Jesus Christ. There were natives uh, all over the land of Burma uh, that were traveling to him, the teacher, and asking about Jesus. And there were even people, travelers, who were coming from the borders of Siam and China to receive gospel tracts from Adoniram. During the years 1830 to 1831, there were even a total of 373 baptisms throughout the mission of Maumeen. It's amazing. And Adoniram also began to plunge himself into scripture translation as he believed that the people needed their own text. They needed to be able to read the text themselves. And upon hearing the words of Christ, that faith would be given. So Adoniram completed uh, Old and New Testament. He completed a dictionary that would enable missionaries to come and have a, a, a more streamlined process of learning language. And then he would also, like I said, he would also give many gospel tracts, outright many gospel tracts. So Adoniram, through the rest of his life, he would lose a second wife, Sarah, to an illness. He would also endure many other hardships, including his dramatic and very painful death at sea in 1812, 1850. So throughout the life and sufferings of Adoniram, thousands of converts were won for Christ in Burma. But not only that, a foundation was laid for the gospel to, con to continue this spread for hundreds of years to come. And also Adoniram's life, man, he became a celebrity. There were many, many of his writings were published throughout America, and this inspired tons of people to devote themselves to see the unreached reach with the gospel. So to the Golden Shore, uh, beautifully and wonderfully crafts the story of Adoniram Judson. And it's also extremely easy to read. You'll fly through it. It's 500 pages, but, but you'll blast through it. Um, there were really three personality qualities of Adoniram that stuck out to me as I was reading uh, this book. The first one was Adoniram's relentless pursuit of holiness. Uh, even before he left for the mission field, he was diligently seeking to right all of his wrongs, confessing sin to people, seeking to, to finish off any of his debt. He was just very persistent in pursuing holiness, and this continued throughout the rest of his life. And by the end of his life, he was uh, really... He knew that death was near, and so he was speaking to his third wife, Emily Judson, and was seeking to confess unrepentant sin in his heart. And he confessed that, that he could find none, and his wife, Emily, would also write that she could find none either. Um, so there's little doubt that one of Adoniram's finest qualities was a zealous pursuit of holiness. And this definitely impacted his mission and allowed his life to produce fruit in abundance. Uh, the second outstanding quality is Judson's undaunted grit and determination. There's few men who have suffered so much for the cause of Christ, yet through the power of the Spirit, Judson was able to persevere toward the upward calling of Christ. And perhaps um, perhaps more than ever, we can see his, his grit and his determination throughout his time in the death camp. Uh, these camps were absolutely horrible. The, the 
the prisoners were kept in almost utter darkness with feces and rats and uh, rotten banana leaves and all kinds of things uh, around them that they were constantly smelling. And even, even more than that is at night, they would bind their feet up, they would tie them to a bamboo pole and would be raised up above their heads and so that the only thing that was touching the ground was their shoulders. And this is how they were forced to sleep for the majority of the nights. But this did not keep Adoniram down. He continued to, to keep faith in God and continued to determine to see the Burmese people uh, reached with the Gospels. So God especially empowered this man and cultivated within him the necessary grit and determination to see a country that was uh, that rejected the gospel as much as Burma to see a country like that uh, claimed for Christ. And then the third, the third quality kind of goes with the second one, but but sticks out specifically is just Adoniram's irrepressible faith in God. And as I kind of mentioned his conversion earlier, God would not in, God would not allow Adoniram to have. Uh, a faith that was kind of this manby pamby faith that we see uh, that, that can be popularized throughout the times today. But Adoniram's faith, man, it was resilient. It was unquenchable. Um, and a lot of this is seen in many places throughout throughout to the Golden Shore. But specifically, he was told, man, you shouldn't, you shouldn't establish a mission in Burma. It'll never happen. Adoniram persevered. Um, multiple times, Adoniram went before the emperor in Burma, who this emperor, if he wished, he could cut your head off in an instant. Uh, but, but Adoniram had faith that God was moving in Burma and wanted to see these people reach with the gospel. And so unrelentingly, he, he went before the emperor multiple times. Um, and there's no doubt that his faith was supernaturally given to him. And it is this faith that propelled him forward in the midst of much opposition, uh, granting him courage when the suffering was all around him. Um, two real big achievements that I want to point out is one, just, just the fruit from Adam's life. Man, he was just faithful to the call of God. He was faithful to follow God's calling on his life, faithful to keep his, his plow in the dirt and keep his hands on the plow and to stay extremely focused on his mission. And there was abundant fruit uh, throughout his life. And his second greatest achievement, well, let me back up. The first greatest achievement, man, there, there are tons of converts. One, I mean, it's just seen thousands of people repenting of their sins, accepting Christ as Lord. But then many people, um, even like myself, who are motivated to, to give our lives to see unreached peoples reached uh, through Adam's influence. And just an extremely motivating and, and challenging and captivating story of how God used just a simple man to accomplish great things. But another, another characteristic or another achievement of Adoniram is his language translation. His Old and New Testament, his dictionary, and the gospel tracts that were spread throughout uh, reaped fruit for years and years to come after Adoniram's death. Um, so from all the hardships that were endured by Adoniram Judson, we must learn to expect trials and to expect sufferings when we attempt great things for God. Um, the trials and persecutions that were that were endured by Adoniram, they didn't come by surprise. He expected them. He expected to suffer the gospel, but he prepared for it. And then he stepped into it with boldness and faith in his sovereign God who would push him Forward. So we who seek to take the gospel to these unreached places, who seek to plant churches in cities like Boston and New York and some of these very unreached and hostile cities, man, we got to expect suffering. We need to expect trials and persecutions, but we need to have an immense and resilient faith in our sovereign God who will use us to spread his gospel to the ends of the earth. So all that to say, To the Golden Shore, The Life of Adam Judson, written by Courtney Anderson, an incredible book. If you're thinking about international missions or you are a missionary now, it's a no-brainer. You need to read this book. It's good for your own faith. It will challenge you to have a greater faith in God and will encourage you um, to devote your life fully to Him. Thanks.